So, um, welcome everyone. As I said, my name is Mary Zupke. I'm a registered dietitian. I work at the Del Nor Cancer Center and also the Warrenville Cancer Center and the Proton Center. Um, so, um, we've been teaching classes here and since we can't have you here in person, we are trying to um, have our virtual offerings for you. So thanks for joining in and it's nice to see some of your faces. So today we're gonna to talk about nutrition apps and diet plans. It's kind of the, the beginning of um, the year and we're in quarantine. So we wanna make sure that we're um, evaluating these properly. So thanks for joining me. I'm anxious to hear your questions a little bit later as well. Um, the, there are many nutrition apps out there, so we want to just make sure that they're evidence-based and that we have um, some good resources to use. Um, right now, we are um, at home a lot, so we're going to be talking a little bit about that and some other tips. So we're going to go right to the um, PowerPoint, and I'll just, like I said, just a couple of slides so we can show you some of the apps. Um, we're trying to use things that are not fads. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit. Um, nutrition apps that are helpful, as I mentioned, and kind of what's the future, because a lot of people are using their phones now. Um, the reason is, is because they're always with us. And right now we're finding out that 88% of the time they're in the same room with you. And usually we're checking our phones about twice an hour, which is pretty amazing, really. Um, considering it just a short time ago when we didn't even have cell phones. <laughs> um, so that's something to just kind of keep in mind that it is a good resource because it's always with you and um, it's kind of an arm's length away. So why should we even use these? What I've noticed is that they are really helping people change behavior, which is amazing. Um, they do have a lot of tips and ways to self-monitor. So you can kind of um, use them to, as you probably know, or maybe not, they are able to track what you're eating. They're able to spit back information really quickly, give you calories. Um, how does your fitness affect the calorie amounts that you have? Um, you can track your physical activity. Probably a lot of people are, are doing that on their phone. Um, checking their steps, that kind of thing. And then they do really help with goal setting. They kind of make the goals for you and sometimes they help you decipher them. Sometimes um, they let you put in the goals. So um, it is really helpful. So here are a couple to get us started. Um, you can kind of see on the top left there, we have Noom which is kind of a new one. Now, some of these um, you do have to pay for and some you don't. So Noom is one where you can do a two week trial and then you can kind of um, sign up, see if you like it. They do have you put in a credit card first. So you have to make sure to um, decline after that two week period. But I, I have found, I tried the two week period and I have found that it is really helpful. And it's one of the most popular um, diet apps out there right now. So that's something just to keep in mind that it might be helpful um, to get you on track if there's a small fee involved. Um, so for Noom, it is really helpful because it does help you kind of track um, your food and also weights. And also it does adjust the calories if you are exercising and it has a really easy way of checking out which exercise gives you a certain number of calories. So that's really helpful. Um, I found it really easy to use and it has a component where you can kind of guide your plan. So if you would like, um, for example, say you're more interested in learning about nutrition then it can gear the program towards nutrition. If you're more interested in learning how fitness would fit into that, then it would gear you towards fitness. So those are just some ways, if you're interested in learning how your brain works um, with food, then you can you know, have the plan go that way. So I think it's really um, kind of an interesting um, way of going about weight and it's got a behavior modification um, plan to it so that it helps you change behaviors that have been going on for a long time. Um, the next one, my calorie counter, my net diary. 
Um, it's really easy to enter data in this one. So I, th I found that that was really helpful. Um, and you can also scan barcodes. So if you have a food, for example, you can, sc you can scan it and it'll tell you right away how many carbs, how many, how much, how many grams of protein. And um, so that way is really easier to um, use if you have a lot of foods in your cabinets or you're using um, some, you know, take home meals or something that have a barcode on there, you can do that. And so that's kind of an easy way to use that one. Now, Lose It has um, some additional exercise classes on there. And it also, you can scan a meal and it'll tell you, you can kind of scan the meal in and then um, enter in some data and then you can use that meal again. So if you're trying to use foods from your um, recipes at home, you can do that. It's a little bit um, trickier to use, I found, um, but it still is helpful because it does help you with goal setting. It helps you um, track how many calories and servings and things like that. Um, food food Ducate is part of Eat This, Not That. And you may have seen those books where it has comparisons of certain foods. So it may have a turkey burger versus um, a high fat sirloin burger and it'll tell you a little bit about which one you should choose. Um, right now, overall, we're recommending a Mediterranean plant-based diet. So more chicken and fish, more olive oil, avocado, peanut butter, the healthy fats in moderation, um, increasing our fruits and vegetables, and then also um, making sure that you're having low fat dairy and if you do have grains or carbs, the whole grain is going to be better. It keeps you full longer. It helps with managing weight. Okay, so let's look at our next set. So we've heard of Weight Watchers before. Um, Weight Watchers still does have a, um, a good, well-rounded program. They went through a phase where they were um, suggesting that unlimited fruit would be okay because they were just trying to have people eat more fruits and vegetables. Um, for people that are monitoring their blood sugar, that could be a problem. But overall, the Weight Watchers um, app is still a pretty good program. That is also one that you would subscribe and you would pay for. But sometimes um, if you do pay for a certain program, um, they're finding that people stick with it a little bit longer. So that's just something to, and a little bit more compliant. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so going down to Yumly, many of you may have seen that Yumly has a lot of recipes on Pinterest. That is a subscriber-based program as well, where you need to go on to, um, you can go onto the app and get some recipes, but others you may have to pay for. So um, they have a premium service where you can sign up. But it does give you some really healthy recipes and it does give you a lot of recipe ideas. And I like that app as well because you can say if you want a gluten-free diet, then that's an excellent way. You can say gluten-free, it'll only give you the gluten-free recipes. If you say you would prefer to have a, a vegetarian or a vegan um, or even a low sodium, they have that on there for you. So that's really can be really helpful, especially if you have a specialized diet. All right, everybody still with me? You guys give me the thumbs up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Um, so the um, My Diet Coach, we've probably seen some of those. I feel like they do a lot of advertising on the internet. Um, so that's another one where it, um, it does have um, an avatar, the, an avatar that you can personalize to kind of make look like your yourself, which some people find is kind of fun. And right now we have a little bit of extra time to do things like that. Um, they do have really good motivational quotes, which is, you know, sometimes not a bad idea, especially during this time. It's nice to have that motivation, even if it comes from um, outside of your, your home or from, uh, you know, just little motivational quotes that can be helpful. So healthy out, um, that is for checking healthy restaurant dishes, but I didn't find this app very easy to use. Um, there was another one called order healthy and that 
basically was just ordering um, any kind of takeout. It was kind of another DoorDash option. So I would say the order healthy didn't really give you a lot of health information. So if you see that one on there, you could check out healthy out. Um, the order healthy wasn't really um, a, a diet or a healthy eating app to use. Okay, and then the last one on that page is Locavore. So the Locavore um, does give you um, produce and local farmers markets, um, but I think it does have to have subscribers. So even though it will give you some information about certain um, local markets, I didn't see any in the Geneva area. So um, I think it, you have to work with the location a little bit, but it is a nice idea to, in general, to think about farmer's markets. That's gonna give you a lot of good fresh food. Eating seasonally based and eating the rainbow was really helpful with, for weight management in general because the seasonal foods are grown and picked more recently, so they're gonna have more nutritional value. Frozen foods now, are, have more nutritional value sometimes than even some of the fresh produce that's on the shelf. Um, they, they harvest it and they freeze it right away, so a lot of those nutrients are still in there. For canned, we wanna just be careful if we're monitoring our sodium. We don't wanna overdo it with that. Okay, so the next page I have is just some fitness ideas. Um, my Fitness Pal is actually one of the most popular fitness apps, according to the US News and World Report and several different sources that I looked up. Um, it's very easy to use. It's free of charge. You can use it anytime and it marries diet and exercise very well. So I think that's really helpful. Um, so my fitness pal has great learning. It's got also really good healthy recipes. So if you sign up for my fitness pal, the recipes will be emailed to you and you can kind of check each week um, if some of those look good to you or if they don't. But I like having new recipes. I feel like that kind of um, gives us some new ideas to make healthy meals. So MyFitnessPal is a, is a great way. You can sign up for um, premiums on MyFitnessPal if you want certain yoga programs, certain classes in fitness. So, so that's a good idea too. I like also that it gives you the breakdown of all the nutrients. So you have um, the protein, the fats, and the carbs, but also, excuse me, you can see how your vitamin C, your vitamin A, some of those other nutrients work if you're you know, making your um, recommended dietary allowance according to the USDA. Okay, so Couch to 5K is um, one that you subscribe to for a cost, um, but I've seen that people really enjoy that and it really does increase activity. They're saying now that the apps are motivating people to, that are working at home. So that's good that it is really getting you out. 59% of Americans are not renewing their gym memberships. So we have to figure out some way to fit in that activity. The US Dietary Guidelines suggest or recommend that we get 30 to 45 minutes of activity at least five days a week. Now, we used to just recommend only 20 minutes, but now we're recommending as, min, as much as you can do. So if you can start out with five minutes, if you can stand instead of sit, like standing up in between commercials if you're watching a TV show at night, um, if you can walk for 10 minutes, even if it's around your house when we're in the colder weather, that still can count as activity. So any way you can fit in that activity is helpful. The packed on there is, um, and also Jazzercise On Demand, those are two that are um, subscriber-based. However, um, I've known some people that have done the packed, and they, they really, you put in, um, let's say, 15 or $20, so it's a small fee. And then if you make your goal every week, you don't lose money. But if you don't make your goal, then you may lose a couple of dollars. Now, if you make your goal and other people in the group 
um, don't make their goal, you may actually increase the amount of money that you have in your bank account on the app. So that could be a good motivator if, um, if that's something that sounds like it would work for you. Um, Jazzercise On Demand is um, it's a program that I, I participate in and I really enjoy it. Um, right now they do have um, all different kinds of activities online. And so you can either subscribe to that or you can go to the classes and some of the local teachers are teaching um, classes online as well if you don't feel comfortable going into the gym yet because I haven't been to the gym yet. Um, so those are some good fitness ideas. So, so how do we decipher apps? What, what makes a good app? First of all, if it works for you, then that's going to be a good app. We want to get one that's going to help you to reach your goals. And if you don't have those goals yet to help with goal setting. Um, so, you know, if it's working for you, then that's excellent. But we also want to make sure that it does have um, resources or it's um, based in science. So if you have um, questions about certain apps, you can ask me in a minute. Um, I, um, I did try to check out quite a few, but if not, we can kind of look at two and see, does it talk about um, certain things that seem drastic? Okay, so if it's eliminating a, a, an entire food group or a group of foods, then it may not be able to provide you with the overall nutrition that you need. So that's kind of um, a little bit of a red flag. We also want to see if um, the calorie level is too low. So for example, if you're under 1200 calories, um, that could be good in certain cases, but for um, many of us that may be too low and our body goes into a starvation mode and then we're not able to lose weight. A lot of times I'll, when I'm counseling people as well, I'll find that people are having one big meal a day and they aren't, aren't sure why they're not losing weight. Sometimes you need to spread out those protein foods throughout the day so that your body metabolism is um, operating at its full capacity so you can burn calories. So we don't want to go too low in calories. A good amount of weight to lose is one to two pounds per week. And then um, is there an a coach or a registered dietitian um, that's part of the program or do they say they've worked with dietitians? Um, that's something to check into. And then of course, we're here as a resource for you um, through Living Well or for through the Cancer Center. So you can always um, reach out to us that way as well. So I wanna go to the next slide here. This is a recipe that um, was from my fitness pal that I tried and it was delicious. It's very easy to make. I used brown rice, but you could always use um, cauliflower rice if you were doing very low carb. And then um, it's kind of, uh, you mix the rice with eggs and a little bit of um, cheese on the top and then you'll have those beautiful vegetables in there. You've got some red pepper, some yellow pepper, some cherry tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes are very good for men's health, especially prostate health going forward. And then black beans, which is a good plant-based protein. So um, the recipe will be in the chat room, but it also should be sent to you um, by email. And I wanted to mention too, that we have all of our recipes on the Living Well website in the culinary nutrition section. When you go to the website first, you'll see that. And in that section, we have recipes in our eating well, our being well, and also the young chefs um, classes. Those recipes um, were for the kids classes, but they are great recipes as well. So you can check out all of those um, on there as well. And maybe this is a good time for me to um, share a little bit about the some of the snacks that I have here prepared for you guys, and then we can answer some more questions. Um, so I like to have some snacks, if possible, um, including fruits and vegetables, because that's what we're usually um, not having quite enough of. 
Um, and then sometimes too, if you continue to be hungry, hungry, um, having a protein food is good too. So I'm just gonna show you some of the things that I, I'm gonna stand up here and show you some things that I brought over. So this is a little um, recipe. It would be in the Young Chef's area. Um, let's see, can you see that? Yeah. So this is um, a little hummus pizza. It's got hummus, red peppers, yellow peppers, tomatoes, and black olives. And um, just a little bit of hummus on a whole grain English muffin. The English muffins are only about 60 calories and they have a good amount of fiber. So they do help um, keep you full longer. Having fiber is really important. For women, we need 30, um, sorry, 25 grams of fiber per day. And men need about 35 grams of fiber. If you start really eating those higher fiber foods, it takes longer to, to digest um, and it keeps you full longer. So another one that I brought um, this is really a simple one too. Um, let me see if I can just move the camera a little bit. There we go. You see that okay? It's just an apple that's sliced up. You can put a little lemon juice if you want to keep it in the fridge. Um, you add, this is a MyFitnessPal idea, and you add cinnamon and you microwave it for 30 seconds to a minute, and it is delicious. So that's a, um, a good idea. And then getting some um, cottage cheese is a nice protein idea too. Let's see, can you see that okay? Is that a little too bright? A little bright. But not bad, yeah. So having some cottage cheese and um, maybe some, some peaches or graham crackers, I like to recommend this 1% um, cottage cheese. Um, that's gonna give you a little bit of satiety, but also um, very low in fat, so lower in calories, so that's awesome. And then just fruits and, and vegetables in general. Um, some of the smaller cucumbers are really easy to um, just eat with a peel on, so you could cut them in wedges like this, or you can just eat them like this, um, plain. And really when you look at some of the vegetables um, that we have, so like the carrots, the peppers, and even just broccoli, think about trying to sneak those in if you can. For an 1800 calorie diet, we need about um, five servings of vegetables a day. So one cup serving, and then this is about a cup here of this um, broccoli. And maybe you wanna add some balsamic to it just to give it a little bit of oomph. This is actually a balsamic glaze, which is a little bit concentrated. It has a little bit of sweetness, um, but it's very low in fat. So that would be a way to kind of spice up that snack. Um, and then nuts are a great idea as well. So we have some pumpkin seeds here or some mixed nuts. Those are a good idea to have around, especially if you're in the car or running around. And if you wanted some sweetness, you could do some dates with that or maybe even some craisins. If you have just a couple of those, those will give you the sweetness craving you want, but still giving you some potassium and some, let's see if I can, there we go. Some potassium and some, um, fiber. And then another idea would be um, this 2% Faye yogurt and then some blackberries. Blackberries are the one of the highest fiber um, berry that you can get. They're about seven grams per serving. Um, and then this plain yogurt, if you're adding fruit to it, it can be um, a little bit more exciting. You could even put it in the blender if you don't like it plain. Um, but a lot of yogurts now have a lot of added sugar, so we just want to be careful with that. All right. So what other questions do we have? That may have spurred on some questions. It looks like we have a big list of them. Um, so let me kind of go down the row here. Um, 
It says, um, my doctor is recommending a strict keto diet versus a Mediterranean diet. And certainly we can um, help support that if um, that's what your doctor is recommending. We have some really good handouts on the lower carb and sometimes that really does jumpstart people into um, a new plan um, and you know weight loss. So if that's what your doctor is recommending, we can help you with that. Um, I had surgery yesterday, so no exercising. What do you recommend besides walking? You can, there are some um, uh, just simple, you can even look them up online, some simple activity where you can use like cans of black beans or any kind of exercise where you're moving. The more you're moving, the more you're gonna start to meet those USDA goals. Um, the, the recommendation that I gave you also, in addition to that, includes two days a week strength training and two days a week stretching. So making sure that you're kind of fitting that in whenever you can, um, whatever your doctor allows, even like I said, even if you're standing and sitting, if your doctor says that's okay, then you know doing that several times during the day will be helpful. Living Well also has some great exercise classes online or offline. And we also have some other cooking classes here um, where we have dietitians that are helping um, called the Eating Well and Being Well. So those are during treatment and then in survivorship. So you can sign up for those as well. Living Well also has private counseling um, through the dietitians. So we are happy to help with that. So just keep us posted. All right, so um, if pre-existing conditions um, could prevent you from losing weight, what are the supplements to help with? And what are their supplements to help with arthritis? I heard turmeric pills, um, or is it better to watch sodium? So, um, yeah, so really for, that's a great question. Anti-inflammatory, what does that mean? So we recommend overall decreasing sugar, decreasing sodium, um, so less processed foods, increasing your fruits and vegetables, just kind of what we talked about today. Um, and I forgot to show you some cuties that I have here. So keeping those around are a great idea. They got some good vitamin C there. So, um, you know, making sure that you're focusing in on those anti-inflammatory foods. Usually we recommend adding turmeric to um, meals as opposed to having the tablet form, especially in treatment, we wouldn't recommend it, but if you're um, past treatment, then we would suggest um, still kind of adding it to food. The Food and Drug Administration is not um, uh, monitoring supplements. So if it's sold in the grocery store, um, then it's probably okay, but the turmeric tablets may have alternate ingredients in there that we don't know about yet. So we would recommend adding that. And if you haven't tried turmeric on cauliflower and broccoli and roasting it at 400 for um, like 25 minutes, it's amazing. So that's a really good way to use turmeric. So we have a couple of other questions. One is, um, what other resources are out there? So um, there are a couple of, of websites that I would say to, um, oh, <laughs> people are so nice, um, to check out. One is called um, the Registered Dietitians um, have a website that we use called eatright.org. And that has um, recipes, it has a lot of good nutrition information, um, we direct um, everyone there. It also has some, um, some of our policies for the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. So that's a great place for you to um, get some additional resources. And then also um, choosemyplate.gov, which is the new food guide pyramid. If you're familiar with the pyramid, um, choose my plate is looking at the plate and having half of the plate fruits and vegetables, one quarter starch, one quarter meat. So um, Choose My Plate has many, many recipes. They're very budget friendly. They don't have a lot of ingredients. Um, and there's also a huge cookbook from 
um, when they had the kids contest, there's one recipe for each state and those states, those um, recipes are really easy to use. So, so that's a good, um, good idea. Um, so those are some good resources if you don't use apps. And I would um, recommend some of those websites too. If you haven't tried um, cookinglight.com, that's another one that has some good recipes. Um, they're whole food recipes usually. So I would say they're, um, uh, they use a lot of plant-based proteins and um, so that's wonderful. Um, some, there's a question too about what about, um, uh, what about uh, if the foods are listed as bad on the app? So some of the apps um, have like a red, a green, and a yellow food. Um, and sometimes they list, for example, peanut butter. So peanut butter, even though it's a healthy fat, it's a little bit higher in calories and it's higher in um, uh, fat. So that would be a concentrated calorie. So in some, I've noticed like the Noom app, they, know they have it listed as a red food. So in that case, I would suggest moderation. It's okay to have that food. It is a healthy food. It's a good plant-based fat, but we don't want to overdo it and we need to monitor portions. So that would be a good way to, to handle that. And then another comment, Blue Goose Grocery Store has, um, oh, has the cookbook from Fox Valley Food for Health. If you haven't heard from Fox, about Fox Valley Food for Health, um, a dietitian and another woman developed this program for meals within 30 minutes of the, um, the cancer center, basically, um, for food safety. And they do provide meals and um, they have volunteers that will deliver the meals to your door. So that's, um, that's very interesting as well. Um, so if you, they have a cookbook and they have a website. So if you wanted to donate to that program or, um, check out their cookbook, you could do that on their website. Okay. Another question we had was, um, are these diet apps okay for kids? So there were some, um, recent research, um, uh, and media coverage on an app called Kerbo, and that was for children that are between ages eight and 17. And um, the American Academy of Pediatrics is concerned that these kinds of apps, because they're so detail oriented, they may be um, actually causing obsessive behavior. So they don't really recommend those kind of apps for our kids. It's better just to have them um, increasing their activity, monitoring their fruits and vegetables, making sure that you're giving them healthy choices and kind of um, approaching it in that way. Have you found any apps that uh, you can log your hydration intake upon? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that you can do that on um, my fitness pal. Um, are you, have you tried it? Have you tried my fitness pal? I, 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 a little bit, but I didn't see anything about water, but I can check. I did want to ask you, do you, do you have a rule of thumb? I, I guess I've been going by at least half your weight in water. Yeah, I mean, we usually recommend 64 ounces of fluids per day. Um, okay. You know, it's 64 to 80, and it really depends on the person. So, you know, we would, we would figure it out specifically for you when, if you were in treatment. Okay. Um, but I would say it's, it's a good rule of thumb to um, aim for 64 ounces. That's a great question. Um, one thing people don't realize is that coffee and tea do count as part of your hydration. Um, soups and also things that melt. So like a gelatin or a um, ice cream occasionally, we don't wanna to have too many concentrated sweets. Those um, all um, go towards, I'm seeing some smiles on the, <laughs> smiling is good, right? We have to smile. 
Um, so those are, are um, also going to contribute to fluids. And, you know, you bring up a really good question here because um, when I am counseling people, I ask them about their hydration and also about sleep. So if you are not getting enough hydration throughout the day, and it's really good to really monitor and kind of count how much you're getting. If you're not getting that 64 ounces in, your body is kind of like we were talking about with the protein. It's not working at its optimal um, level for burning calories. So you wanna make sure that you are um, you know, getting adequate hydration as well as sleep. If you're not getting enough sleep, sometimes you have more of a tendency to snack, you're trying to make it through the day. Um, so those things really do kind of fit into managing um, weight and, um, you know, kind of making, making that whole picture complete. So great question. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. I see some of you hydrating, so good work. <laughs> yeah. Has been through this gave me this cup <laughs> and it never leaves my side and it holds probably probably 18 ounces but I pour a water bottle in there you know and I keep track three or four a day usually mixed with all the other stuff but I take it to my desk I take it to my chair I you know and it really helps because I did not used to drink enough water and I really have been, and I think it really, really makes a difference. I, I love that, Sue. I think that's a great example. And I, I had a patient yesterday that was asking me, um, like, how do I keep track? Like, what do I do? I, I keep forgetting, and then I add some water in, and I forgot how much I put in. And <laughs> there's so many things to remember, right? Especially when you're in treatment. So I suggested a couple of things. I had one patient that had eight water bottles up on his counter, those little eight ounce ones, um, you would put those up every day and then he would just take one down. Um, yeah. Another way to do, would be to do the 16 ounce ones and just keep those handy. Um, yeah. Or you can have a big pitcher in your fridge and just you use that pitcher so that you know kind of what you're doing. And sometimes we'll even suggest putting some basil and cucumber in there. Cucumber. Yeah. Um, <laughs> to make sure that you're getting some, um, you know, some kind of new flavors. You know, how can you make it exciting? I really drink a lot of tea now, especially during the pandemic, um, and especially in the winter, because I find it hard to hydrate when um, I'm drinking cold fluids. Um, so yeah, so hydrating with um, tea or warm fluids and using the, the chamomile or even the mint or the ginger tea, if you're having um, a little bit of stomach upset, those are really, really helpful. But that's important. I, I like your um, the colorfulness of your cup too, Sue. I feel like, you know, why not make it a little fancy or a little pretty so that you, you know, it kind of cheers you up when you see it. I think it's great. Yeah, ooh, I like that pink yep. one, Char. Yep. Very good. <laughs> um, I struggle with carbs. I'm a carbaholic. Um, what do you suggest an average person how many grams or however, I, I use my fitness pal religiously. I'm all, always, always over the carb content. So I don't even know if I have it in correctly, you know, for a bowl. Yeah, so, yeah. So, Boy, average. yeah, that's a great question. And it's, it's a really common question. I feel like um, many of us are, try, we're trying to sneak in these, these, um, these red peppers, right? We're trying to sneak in these um, fruits and vegetables. Um, so for an 1800 calorie diet, for example, that what that would look like in a day would be three quarters of a cup of cereal at breakfast, two slices of whole grain toast or bread at lunch for a sandwich, for example, and then a cup of rice or pasta at dinner. So that sounds like a lot, right? You're like, oh gosh, that's, you know, all that cereal and bread. But if you have like a granola bar, or um, something, then that's extra. That's above your carbs. So something like that, you would look at the label and say 15 grams would be one serving. So let's say instead of a sandwich, you have Triscuits, you wanna look at that and say, okay, I could have 30 grams, which would probably be about six Triscuits or maybe a little bit more. So, you know, you want to really kind of watch throughout the day. 
if you're finding that you're going towards those carbs, a couple things. One, look at your protein. Are you getting enough protein throughout the day so that you're not hungry? And are you spreading it out throughout the day? And also, um, are you having um, breakfast with only carbs? Because that can throw your blood sugar into kind of an up and down throughout the day, and then you're craving more carbs. Some studies are showing it used to, we used to think that you couldn't retrain your brain to um, have less sugar and less salt in the diet, but now we know you can. So sometimes it may take a couple of weeks of really cutting back before you start to notice that you don't crave it as much. Does that make sense? It does, thank you. Yeah, no problem. One thing I didn't show you is this, um, the Smart Pop. Popcorn is a great, um, it looks like it might be, can you see the whole thing? So this is one, you wanna just look at the ingredients. This one has popcorn and it has um, like a vegetable, like a corn or a, um, actually it has canola, sunflower. So that's a good choice. Usually three cups of popcorn is um, about a serving size. So um, as long as you don't have any other dietary restrictions, that can be a good snack and it really helps keep you full. And sometimes um, it'll give you that kind of crunch that you want without overdoing it. Do you think Skinny Pop is okay? Um, anything kind of similar? Yeah, Skinny Pop is a good choice too. Um, the Some of the popcorns do have added sugar sometimes, so just make sure you're aware. And then some of them may have added artificial sweetener. So if it has sucralose, that can sometimes cause um, bloating or gas. So just make sure that you're, you know, checking that out. Um, but yeah, popcorn is a good idea. Um, Actually, I have the, the Pop Smart. I had a question, where do you get the Pop Smart? Um, and this one's called Smart 50. Um, and I, I just got it at Jewel here in um, St. Charles. So those are pretty easy. I know the um, Skinny Pop you can get at Costco in the ginormous bags. <laughs> you guys have been wonderful. I, I am so excited to be here with you and I appreciate all of your wonderful questions. Um, I hope that I'll see you again for another Hot Topics and keep those questions coming and then check out our website to get some more recipe ideas. And thanks so much for participating. Give, your, give, your, give yourselves a big round of applause. <laughs>